Hello, Pokemon trainers! Welcome back to another in-game team battle between Dieter and I on iStarly TV. So this is a series that we haven't contributed to in quite a while, but this is where we fight Dieter and I with our in-game teams, the teams that we used when we played through Pokemon Sun and Moon. So if you're interested in watching the previous episodes of the series, it's fun to watch our teams as they grew, like as we caught new Pokemon and, and raised them. We started from the very beginning, and now we finally have two complete teams. And so it was really exciting. We, we did this actually about a month ago, but I've just gotten around to narrating it right now. So hopefully you'll enjoy and take a look at our teams, you know, pretty cool stuff. I'll, I'll kind of go in more detail as we do the battle, but I hope you enjoy. Please leave a like if you do enjoy. Please subscribe for more content. Follow us on Twitch and Twitter as well and enjoy the battle. So you can appreciate Dieter's battle. As you will notice here, very good quality and I really like the background. It's beautiful. It reminds me of Destiny Islands from Kingdom Hearts. I lead off with my Lycanroc. I felt like it was a good lead. And he leads with his Bumbelina, or his, uh, what's it called? Little, uh, cutie fly Ribombi. That's, that's what it's called. He realizes that it's a really bad matchup for his Ribombi, so he's gonna switch into Spook Bear, which is his Beware. And I go for the Accelerot because I felt like it would do a lot of damage. Now, this Beware is gonna give me a whole lot of trouble in this battle. It's just so bulky. And I have a good amount of physical attackers on my team. And as you'll see right there, that super effective Brick Break does very, very little. It basically does nothing. Here he goes for the Rock Slide. I think he was predicting me to switch into something else. I think he might have been predicting me to switch into Salazzle there. But Salazzle has terrible defense, so I didn't want to get Salazzle in on any hit. Now I'm going to go into my Komoo, just kind of figuring that, you know, I can probably take a hit pretty well and do a lot of damage to him. But he actually makes a good play, goes for the Hammer Arm, assuming that I was just going to stay in with my Lycanroc. And that does a lot of damage to Komoo. Komoo's defense is not terrible. That just shows you how powerful Beware actually is. And here he's, he feels threatened, so he's actually going to go into his Bumbelina. I go for the Sky Uppercut because I figured it would do a decent amount of damage to his Beware. And because Bumbelina, Bumbelina has horrible defenses as well, but because it four times resists that, it's a bug and fairy type, it just it just eats it up. It eats up Komoo's fists, and I'm afraid of a four times super effective fairy move. So I'm going to go into a into my Salazzle, which four times resists the fairy move. So we're a lot of four times resists here in this battle, which is pretty interesting. And he's weak to both of my stab, however, he does have Psychic, and he makes this smart assumption that he's actually going to be faster than I am, and he goes for the Psychic. That almost kills me. Luckily, I do hang on, and I'm going to be able to go for the Sludge Wave, which is going to do just such a massive amount of damage to the Bumbelina. It is going to finally knock it out. Bumbelina was scary to me because of the fact that it's just so fast. It's faster than everything on my team, and I felt like I had to keep Lycanroc alive if I wanted to keep that Bumbelina in check. Without Lycanroc, he could pretty much sweep my team. He goes into Mimikyu, and I know that he has Shadow Sneak, so I'm just going to go into my... my... Toucanon to take the incoming Ghost move. And here, I went for the Flame Charge, just assuming that I wanted to break Mimikyu's Disguise, and it would also give me a Speed Boost, which will help me against his team. I've actually swept his team before with this beautiful Toucanon by getting a Speed Boost from the Flame Charge. Here, I actually make a pretty bad play, and instead of going for the be Beak Blast, which I should have done, which would have actually helped me out immensely, I went for the Brick Break. And you're gonna, you're gonna find right here... Actually, I don't think he would have gotten burned from the Beak Blast because he went for a Z-Move. So it kind of didn't 100% matter, but it, it did it did hurt me that I didn't, because I could have gotten more damage with the Beak Blast. But here he's going to go for the Black Hole Eclipse, which actually, does this kill me? Let's see if this kills me here. I mean, it's going to do a lot of damage, and Muck is just a great Pokemon as well. It's really bulky, and it's got a decent attack stat. Yeah, he just kills me anyway, so, so that, never mind, I'm actually wrong. If I had gone for the Beak Blast... He would have just killed me and I wouldn't have gotten off any damage. So maybe Brick Break was the smarter play there. Here I go into Lycanroc because I actually don't really have too many Pokemon that can really deal with this muck at this point. And it's kind of scary. He has a lot of Pokemon that my team suffers or struggles against. And so he's going to go for the Brick Break which is almost going to kill me because I did miss the Rock Slide. And here I'm just like, you know what? F it. Fudge it. Screw it. Whatever G-rated <laughs> curse word you want to use. Um, I'm just gonna go for my Z move here because I, I can't have this muck stay alive, you know, ha ha ha, staying alive, staying alive. And this is kind of a weird situation because he's just a pile of goop. And like, I'm just gonna drop a gigantic continent on a pile of goop. So you would think that because his body is liquid that this wouldn't hurt him, but for some reason it does. 
he's gonna go into his gigantic threat spook bear he has a lot of gigantic threats like i said and i just i know i can't do anything to it i could go for brick break and it's it wouldn't do that much damage and then he'll just finish me off anyways he'll finish off my lichen rock so and then my other moves are like rock type moves which he resists here he goes for earthquake i don't know why he well i guess he didn't go for hammer arm because it would lower his speed he goes for the earthquake and i believe i take it pretty well so that's pretty good for me now that his bumbling is dead he doesn't have a great resist for this well no actually he has mimic you never mind yeah so mimic you does come out expecting the fighting type move and I do go for it just to be safe. At this point, I am behind on the battle. Like, I'm losing. Actually, it's kind of close right now. But I just felt like going for the safer play was was better. And now I cannot take a play rough. So I'm just going to go into Vikable. At this point, I'm running out of switch-ins. I'm running out of Pokemon that can switch into his attacks. He is wearing my team down little by little. He just he just has a great team. And I think he's playing this battle really, really well. I figured Vikable is decently bulky. So I could probably take one or two hits. Here I go for the Volt Switch, just to mainly to break his disguise, because the longer this Mimikyu's disguise is intact, really just the more I suffer, because it's going to be able to fire off hits easily on my team, and it has really good coverage to begin with. So here I kind of make a last-ditch effort and go into my Decidueye. It's not a good matchup for Decidueye, I know that to be true. And he's, he's going to feel threatened and actually go into his Incineroar, which is obviously a good play, because Incineroar really handles Decidueye really nicely and I just went for the Spirit Shackle just to trap his his Mimikyu but of course since he goes into his Incineroar that's not going to quite be the case and he's going to be able to threaten me with either a super effective fire move or a super effective dark move both of which Komoo resists but because he's gotten so much damage on my Komoo at this point I can't take too many more hits. He's just doing such a good job of wearing down my team, forcing switches, just getting that incremental damage. And I think that in that regard, if I'm going to compliment Dieter, he is playing pretty well here. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> and he goes into his Voodoo, who, whose thing is broken, whose thing is broken. Now, Mimikyu is actually just the best thing against Komuo. Like I said, he just has the perfect counter team to mine. And he didn't do that on purpose. He didn't say, like, I'm going to build a team that's completely great against Scarecrow's team. No. These are the Pokemon he liked and that he wanted to use. It just so happens to be the case that pretty much all of his team is just excellent against my team. So he finally finishes off my Komuo, then he finishes off my Vikavolt. And like I said, I just don't have any switches at this point. I think I, I know I have Decidueye left. I have Salazzle who's at 4 HP. And then I have, who else do I have? I don't remember off the top of my head, which is kind of embarrassing for me. I think I do. Do I still have Lycanroc? I don't. I don't think so. Anyways, Brave Bird because I felt like you know, obviously this is a neutral hit. It'll it'll deal the most damage to whatever he has, and it does a decent amount of damage, but it's not going to be enough to two hit KO. It looks like. So I'm just kind of I'm just stuck. I'm just stuck. I can't switch anything into this. I I felt like Salazzle was really important here because of the fact that it's really fast. I just need to deal with Mimikyu before I deal with his Sal or. I need to deal with Mim Mimikyu before Salazzle can really finish the game for me. So now I'm down to my... <laughs> this is funny. I'm down to my Lycanroc and my Salazzle, both of whom have 5 HP or less. And here I get lucky, go for the Rock Slide. He doesn't have a switch into... Well, yeah, he does. He has he has Beware, but... Yeah, I just went for the Rock Slide. He just stayed in there. I was a little bit surprised that he stayed in because I felt like he could just easily predict that, go into Beware, and just take that hit super easily, given that he's at full health, nearly full health. But that's not the case. I'm just going to go for the Brick Raid just to get some final damage on this thing. And he is just once or once and for all going to finish me off with the Earthquake. I do have Salazzle, like I said. He has Beware, who is fairly low on health, as well as Mimikyu. And this is an, a situation where I know that I probably am not going to win this fight. But I, I thought that it was worth it to at least be 1-0. Like, at least take down most of his team. Well, I, I think I ended up being 2-0, two and, two and oh, but I do finish off the Beware here. I went for Sludge Wave. Oh, yeah, that, okay, never mind. That was that was foolish of me. I don't know why I went for Sludge Wave. I, I think I was predicting the Mimikyu to switch in there, but Mimikyu probably wouldn't have wanted to switch in anyway. I probably should have just gone for the Fire move just to deal more damage onto the Beware. Beware is essentially weak to Fire because of its fluffy ability, but anyways, very awkwardly, I do lose that fight. It was kind of close. I think if I had played it a little more smartly, I could have probably done more. He never even sent in his Golisopod. That's how, that's how much he destroyed me. <laughs> uh, pretty embarrassing. But I had a lot of fun with that fight. 
and I think that the background was really beautiful. Once again, I do feel like his team was just really well matched against mine, but I hope you enjoyed this series. If you do enjoy, let us know because, well, now that our teams are, are complete and, and we're done playing the in-game, like I've just been breeding a lot of Pokemon and playing a lot online. So we're not really focusing on the in-game teams anymore, but if you'd like to see more of this, let us know because I do have a couple other battles against Dieter backed up. And if you'd just like to see other battles between Dieter and I, or even battles against some of you, let me know and we can start working that out because I want to get more battles in and I'm probably going to be streaming soon. Uh, hopefully next week I'll be able to battle some of you and trade some of you and whatnot. I might do a giveaway when the Beedrill light comes out, so I might give away some Mega Beedrills when that happens <laughs> if you're interested in that please subscribe please leave a like and comment below what more content you'd like to see for my starly tv hope you have a wonderful day see you soon